Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Good morning, church. How are you doing today? Let's stand. God's got some incredible stuff for us today. I can't believe how amazing he is. I'm so glad you're here. Let's experience this together. Sing it for them.
just kidding. Hey, you may be seated for a second. For those of you who are here for child dedication, I need you to make your way up. Camelia Carrillo, child number one. Rose Bauman. Anae Borgas. Roxy Garner. We're doing some family business. Every fifth Sunday of the month, we uh, dedicate children to the Lord. You guys have been doing y'all's work. Y'all are replenishing the earth. There's a lot of kids coming. Yeah, make your way to the stage. This way, this way. Just, just walk around the stage, and it'll be fantastic. Babe, can you help them? Liam and Reagan Hand, Avery Brutler, Shauna Davis, Lori Davis, and Vaden Hinojos. I'm not sure. I'm sorry. Delilah Hinojosa. Oh, okay, they spelled it wrong. Sorry, buddy. Delilah Sadler. And a shout out to Rhett and Landon Welch. They're watching online because I think mom or someone is at bed rest. So excited. I'm telling you, man, stuff in the back in the back that's going on, you have no idea, but some crazy stuff's happening. Beautiful stuff. People are getting saved. All kinds of crazy stuff's going on. I'm telling you, it's so beautiful. And this is Abby, our children's director. She's married. Just saying. Whoa, there's a bunch of you guys. God is good. You guys have been doing some work. What are y'all? Y'all's mind is in the gutter. Real quick, I just want to share some things with you guys, okay? Child dedication is a beautiful thing. First of all, whether you recognize this or not, that child is a gift from God. It's a gift. When they get teenagers, they might not be that much of a gift, but they're a gift from God. Children are a heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb, it's His reward. That's His reward for you. It's His reward for the earth. It's His reward for us. It's beautiful. And so it's an opportunity for you as a parent to thank God for the gift that He's given you. It's also an opportunity to go public with your with your uh, intentions to raise this child in the ways of the Lord. It's just a beautiful thing. They're beginning. They're giving you a, a, a certificate. They're giving you a, a brand new Bible and a uh, fifty dollar gift certificate to where at Abby? Oh, never mind. <laughs> Outback Steakhouse. I'm just kidding. Maybe next time. But I'm just so proud of you guys such a valuable moment. Before this child came out of the mother's womb, it was born in the heart of God. Amen. Therefore, he, they have an eternal purpose. And it's up to you as parents to mind that out, to help them discover what that is. It says, train them up in the way that they should go, not the way you want them to go. They have gifts. There's certain things that God has destined for their lives. And so as they see you worship God, as they see you interact with one another and forgive and, and love and pursue what God has for your life, they're going to see that example. And the hope is that the God that you serve will become the God that they serve. Amen. And then, man, who knows what's going to happen. It's just going to be a beautiful thing. Okay, so there's just one passage of scripture that I want to share with you, and it's in Deuteronomy. I have it here. Just love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind he says, the commandments that I give to you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them upon your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, dinner time, breakfast time. Talk about them when you walk, walk along the road and talk about them when you lie down and when you get up. And then for all the dads here, another passage in Ephesians says, fathers, don't provoke your children to wrath. Bring them up in the training and the instruction of the Lord. Dad, you have a major, 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 major role and impact on the health and the strength spiritually of these children. They're beautiful gifts. And of course, your wife is a beautiful gift as well. And one of the things that changed my heart was when I found out that God was not only my God, not only was he my father, but he was also my father-in-law. I'm like, oh man, you're my father-in-law too. So I can't mess around with this girl because my father-in-law would not be happy. But that's... <laughs> so what we're going to do is I just want uh, you to understand that 
you're really dedicating yourself to the Lord, you and the parent, and you're saying, man, God, this child's yours. What do you do with the gifts that God gives you? You give them right back to him, to honor him, to, you know, to leverage your influence upon their lives, and watch God do amazing, amazing, amazing work in their life. Amen. So we're going to say a simple prayer, and then I'm going to go individually and just pray. And these guys are going to be singing. There's a video playing. I want to ask the elders, Pastor Navi, Abby, let's just go around them and just lay hands on them and pray for them. But let me pray first, okay? Father, I just thank you for these families. Bless them, Lord God. The moms and the dads and other family members, we're here to help. We're here to assist. We're here to lift them up and encourage. But Lord, they are dedicating their family. And the intention is to bring them and raise these children up in the admonition of the Lord. So empower them, bless them. You have gifts in their lives. I pray that those gifts will come forth from this day forward, Lord God. They're yours. In Jesus' name. And everyone that agreed with that said, amen, amen. You can stand while we pray.
we're going to get into water baptism. You may be seated for a second. Sorry, you feel like the Catholic Church. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Real quick, water baptism. It's an outward expression of something that's happened already on the inside of us. The people that you're going to see getting baptized in water here, they are pledging an allegiance to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. They're identifying with him rather than their old past, their old ways of living. You know, some of you guys are recognized like, oh, man, that's a bad dude right there. But there's like, you know what? I'm dead to that. I'm going down into the water. Old things are passed away. All things have become new because God made me new. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. There's three baptisms in Scripture. The first baptism is when you said yes to Jesus. Scripture says that you are now baptized or immersed into the body of Christ. And so you become a part of the family of God. All these guys right here, they're a part of your family. Not all of them, but most of them are. So one day you're going to be, so if you don't like them right now, you might as well like them. You might as well love them. They might be right next door in heaven. And so they're part of the family. That's the first baptism. And then the second baptism is uh, water baptism. And it's just a symbol, an outward expression, an outward symbol of what's already taken place on the inside. And they're going public with their faith before their family and friends like, man, I love Jesus. I'm not turning back. Then the third baptism is being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And that's just when you just open up your heart, say, God, fill me with your spirit. Whatever you want me to do, I know I can't do anything on this earth by myself. I need your spirit to lead me, to guide me, to empower me so I can fulfill your purpose in life. And you can just do that whenever you want to. As a matter of fact, when Natalie got baptized or we got baptized, we went to a church service. We gave our life to Christ. That's probably the hundredth time because we didn't know what we were doing. It was like, yes to Jesus. We come to the altar. We give our life to Christ. They said, well, what do we do now? They, I asked them. They said, they go, go to the back. And they gave us these robes. It's like, here, get water baptized. So we went into a closet. And I didn't know what to do with these robes. I was like, I wasn't a priest. I grew up in the Catholic church, but I didn't know. So I just took all my clothes off and I just threw this thing on. And I met Nadia. It's like, it's kind of weird, right? It's like, yeah, it's weird. So it was like a real elevated deal. And they went down into the water. We got baptized. I said, Natalie, you go first because you needed a whole lot more than I did. So she, no, I'm just kidding. It's not true. I'm going to hear it afterwards. Watch. So she comes up out of the water. God fills her with the spirit. She starts praying in other tongues. I'm like, what? we didn't know anything about tongues. We don't know anything about anything. We were just open. It says, God, just, we're yours. We're so tired of living the way we're living. And God empowered her by his spirit. And it was just a beautiful, beautiful moment. So every single one of these folks, I want you, when they go down out into the water, they come up out of the water, I need y'all to rejoice because in heaven, there's rejoicing and celebrating going on right now. Amen. And so um, what's crazy is I'm sitting here instructing all these folks. And then another guy comes in, Ben. Like, hey, I want to get baptized. They're like, who are you? And so he got born again. He was in the first service. He goes, man, I need to get baptized. So it's like, cool. So come on in. I'm going to start again. Then a Peter walks in. And a, Zer- a, Z- a Zariah walks in. And a Devon walks in. I'm like, who are you guys? I'm like, man, we're just tired. We want to give our lives to Christ. It's like, so it's just a really cool thing that's going on. It's like, I don't know these people, but God knows them. And evidently, God's working by his spirit inside of their hearts. And so the last four, I don't know who they are, but let's celebrate with them because they're uh, just an amazing. There's a one guy named Christian who last week after the message, he comes in and goes, brother, I got to give my life to Jesus. I need to get baptized, but I'm not ready. It's like, so we led him to Christ and you'll hear him, Christian Soto, he was just like, man, I'm surrendered. So he just, he's getting buried. He's being raised up. It's just a beautiful, beautiful thing taking place. Draw your attention to the screen. They're making a public profession. And then we'll baptize them down here. I'm Alexi Gonzalez, and I am going public with my decision to follow Christ. Married with him in baptism and raised again in the newness of life. My name is Lacey Lopez, and I am going public with my decision to follow Christ. Married with him in baptism and raised again in the newness of life. My name is Kelsey Garcia, and I am going public with my decision to follow Christ. Married with him in baptism and raised again in the newness of life. My name is Christian Soto, and I'm going public with my decision to follow Christ. Married with him in baptism and raised again in the newness of life. Christian! My name is Albert Hernandez, and I'm going public with my decision to follow Christ. Married with him in baptism and raised again in the newness of life. My name is Melissa Hernandez, and I have decided to go public with my faith in Jesus Christ. Married with him in baptism and raised again in the newness of life. My name is Lacey Lopez, and I am going public with my decision to follow Christ. 
My name is Ernest Perez and I am born public with my decision to follow Christ. Buried with him in the baptism and raised again in the newness of life. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Lacey. Come on up, Lacey. All right. Lacey, you're first. I heard you were a bad person. I'm just kidding. You got a 60 second one. Lacey, based on the confession of your faith, from the Lord Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, buried with Him in baptism, raised again in newness of life. Amen. Woohoo! What's the next one? Kelsey Garcia. Kelsey Garcia. All right, Kelsey. 60 seconds. 60 seconds. Yes. She's like, keep me under. I'm like, okay. Kelsey, based on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus, we baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, buried with them in baptism, raised again in newness of life. Amen. Christian. All right, Christian. One week old in Jesus. Amen. So excited for you, man. Congratulations. Christian, God's got plans for you, brother. Based on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, buried with Him in baptism, raised again in the newness of life. Amen. Brother, we love you, man. Ernest, or Melissa, I'm sorry, Melissa. Albert. Sorry, Albert. I should have known. Let's go, Albert. You're a Marine, right? Thank you for serving, brother. Albert, based on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus, we baptize in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism, raised again in newness of life. Woo! <laughs> Melissa. Albert, do you want to be here? Albert, do you want to be with Melissa? Melissa, come on up. You want, to, you want to bury your bury your wife? Sorry. You want to baptize your wife? Yeah, help me out. However long you want to keep her under, brother. <laughs> Melissa, based on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism, raised again in the newness of life. Amen. So excited for y'all. Ernest. Come on, Ernest. This is it, brother. Love you, man. Appreciate you. All right, Ernest. Have a seat. Ernest, based on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son, and Holy Spirit, buried with them in baptism, raised again in newness of life. Amen. Jalen, little Jalen. You go back. All right, Jalen. Based on the confession of your faith, Jason, Jalen, baptized in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism, raised again in newness of life. Amen. All right, Ben. All right, Ben. Woo! Ben came after the service. He's like, I need to get baptized. I'm like, okay, who are you? Dude. Bless you. All right, Ben, here we go. Based upon the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with him in baptism, raised again in the newness of life. Amen, bro. <laughs> Love you, man. All right. Congratulations. All right. That? Azaria. Come on in. Azaria and her boyfriend came in. 
were like, I need to give my life to Jesus. I'm like, okay, let's do this. Azariah, Azariah, sorry. Based on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus, baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism, raised again in newness of life. Devin? Okay. Devin. What's up, Devin? You're going to mess up your hair, man. All right, bro. Let's see. All right, Devin. It's your girlfriend, right? Based on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus, we baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with him in baptism, raised again in the newness of life. So cool. Amen. Last one, Peter. Come on in, Peter. like, I need to get baptized. I need to get saved. He starts telling me about all his past. I'm like, forget your past, man. Your past is gone. Now you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. Peter, based on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus, we baptize you into the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism, raised again in newness of life. Amen. crazy crazy just by chance oh one more what happened now Amen. anybody else want to get baptized you're welcome to come you're tired of the way that you're living if you're tired and you want to surrender to Jesus you want to identify with Jesus who cares about what you're wearing get over here let me baptize you in the name of the Lord you coming in Go, bro. Do this. Love you, man. Right in. Okay, who are you? Oh, okay. Come on in. It's Leia. Estrella. Whoa. Does that mean star in Spanish? Okay. Little star. Estrella, based on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus, we baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son, Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism. Raise again in units of life. Wait a minute. Estrella, sit down. You didn't go all the way in. Come on. Let's go. There you go. Yep. All right. Uh oh, we're getting undressed now. What is going on? Are you guys all getting baptized now? What the heck? All right, let's do this. Come on, brother. What was your name? Cristo? Greek. Okay, Luis. Lopez. Nice, man. It's time, bro, right? Take the lighter. Take all that out. Luis, have a seat. Based upon the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we baptize in the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism, raised again in newness of life. Amen. Crazy. Come on, bro. Let's do this, man. Love you, baby. Yes, sir. Can't go back now. All things are passed away. All things have become new. Four hundred and seventy-nine days clean. Based on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus, we baptize in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism, raised again in newness of life. Amen. 
Is that it? Oh, we got more? Are y'all serious? Okay. What was your name? What was your name? Heather. Heather, come on. Heather, based on the confession of your faith, the Lord Jesus, we baptize in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, buried with them in baptism, raised again. <laughs> Gabby, why are you crying, Gabby? Jesus is touching you, isn't he? I will see, Gabby. Based on the confession of your faith in Jesus, we baptize in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism, raised again in newness of life. Amen. He's got it. What is happening, you guys? Hey, make sure that all of them are born again, okay? Come on. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. What's your name? Vanessa. Have a seat, Vanessa. Go ahead and have a seat. Vanessa, based on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus, be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism, raised again in newness of life. All right. Come on, girl, it's time. Let's go. It's warm. Based on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism, raised again in the of life. Wow. What was your name? Casey. All right, Casey. Casey, based on the confession of your faith in Jesus, we baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, buried with them in baptism, raised again, and you live life. Wow. Hold on right quick. Come on in, sis. Listen, I haven't been part of one of these in years. But when they're coming here, they're just shedding tears. Because Jesus is touching them. Something's going on. God's doing a work. And so we just go with it. I apologize. It's 1139. I'll preach, but this is the message. God's doing a redemptive work inside of people's hearts. Nobody can stop them. So if you want to get baptized, you've never given your life in Jesus, get in line. We'll just do two at a time if we need to. What was your name? Shantae. Shantae, very brave of you. We can keep going. Jesus' name, Shantae, based on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism, raised again in newness of life. Amen. Praise Come on in, brother. What's your name? Matthew. Ready to give my life to God. Amen, bro. Ready to give his life to God. All right, my friend. Based on the confession of your faith in Jesus, we baptize in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism, raised again in the of life. we free, man. Come on in. Come on in. What's your name? Mary. Mary. Mama Mary. Have a seat, Mary. Based on the confession of your faith, Mary, in the Lord Jesus, we baptize in the name of the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, buried with them in baptism, raised again in the newness of life. Who are you? Jared? Aaron. All right, here we go. Aaron, 
Based on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus, we baptize you. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Buried with him in baptism, raised again in units of life. Thank you. What's your name? Joel. Joel. All right, Joel. I've seen you come to church in a while, right? Woo! Joel, based on the confession of your faith in Jesus, we baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism, raised again in units of life. It's awesome, man. Bud. No, keep your shirt on. All I did was bow down. Hey, man. Do this for a second time. Okay. All I did was Based on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus, we baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. so powerful. She's one of our student ministry, our student leader's daughter. I'm going to let you do this. Oriana, based on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism, raised again. of your faith in the Lord Jesus, we baptize in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism, raised again in the newness of life. Amen. that girl singing up there? That's her mom. Sister, have a seat. Have a seat. All things are passed away. Jesus is doing something beautiful based on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus. We baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism, raised again in newness of life. I like this lady right here. She's got cowboys shirt on you. What was your name again? Esmeralda. Esmeralda. Miss Elise. Wow. Esmeralda, go ahead and have a seat. Based upon the confession of your faith, in the Lord Jesus, we baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son, Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism, raised again in the newness of life. Come on, baby. Let's give it up for the last one, I think. Oh, we got more? Oh. Okay. That's so cool. All right. What was your name? Brianna? Okay, Brianna. Are you sure you want to do this? Based on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus, we baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism, raised again in the newness of life. Is that it, babe? Oh. Debrick? Are you serious? Wow, dude. Debrick, all things are passed away, bro. 
all things, bury that stuff in the water. You come up, it's a new life in Him. Based on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus, be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, buried with Him in baptism, raised again in the newness of life. Okay. This little girl's watching over here. She goes, I want to get give my life to Jesus. I, she just gave her life to Jesus. What was your name, sweetie? What is it? Anna, Anna E. Is that right? I don't want to mess it up. Is this your daddy right here? This your mama? You want to get baptized, huh? You already gave your life to Jesus? I'm so proud of you. How old are you, sweetie? Five? You know, my daughter gave her life to Jesus when she was three. And it worked. Have a seat. Dad, I want you to come up here, bro. I want you to help me. Go on that side right there. Okay, have, have a seat on your bottom, okay? It's warm. Baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Buried with them in baptism. Raised again in the newness of life. Amen. Yes! Woo! Stay up here, okay? You're going to have a seat. I'm going to try to preach God's word in nine minutes. Just bring me that table. That's all I need. And we'll bring that. You don't mind, Roger. Give me that. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Lord. We're doing a series entitled Identity. drunk. And identity is very much talked about right now all over the world. People are trying to steal uh, identity. The most common is financial identity, medical identity. You know, we have to, we have, to have a foundation. How you see yourself in the mirror influences every aspect of your life. I mean, how you see yourself, who you are, and who defines you is a question we've been asking. Who's defining you? What do you say about yourself? What do you think about yourself? And Jesus came to preach a message, and the message came with this word, it's called repentance. And it's kind of a scary word according to, you know, religious folks. But all repentance is to change the way you think. Change the way you think about my father. The Pharisees, they were trying to represent who the father was, but they had a misrepresentation of who the father was. And he goes, man, I need to come here to help you understand who my father is. Change the way you think about him so that once you understand who he is, it'll change the way you live on a day-to-day basis. And so that's what identity has been, that's what we've been talking about. To help people understand how God sees you. Because when you look in the mirror, some people see a monster. Some people see individuals that have never been forgiven. Their worth and their value is very, very small, very minimal. I'd go do a bunch of prison ministries 
um, I did about 50 meetings a year for years. And I would go into these, these uh, places where these big, strong, grown men, they were tough. They could take me out any second. But when I began to talk to them about how God would see them, all of a sudden tears would just come down from their eyes. Because I would tell them, I was like, listen, where do you keep your most valuable treasure? We put it locked up. Well, guess where you're at? You're locked up, ain't you? Some of the most beautiful treasures are in places that are locked up. And you just happen to see yourself here and you don't feel worth, you feel worthless. You're not here with your mom. You're not here with your parents. You're not, you're neglecting your kids. All this stuff's happened because of your own doing. But that's not how God sees you. All of a sudden, I began to share with them how God views them and how God sees them. You're totally forgiven. You're completely accepted by God. God sees you with value and worth. You determine the worth of something by a price that was paid. I just had a guy come up to me. I was putting some tires on my little old Ram pickup. He had this big old awesome, I don't know what it was, just big old machine. He goes, hey, it's that. I'm like, I don't even talk like that. How much do you think that's worth? It's like, I don't know, man, 40,000, 50, it was 80-something thousand. I'm like, cool. He says, mine's not worth that much. I just need a $100 tire. (laughs) But you put worth on something based upon the price that person paid for it. Well, listen, just that right there. The price that was paid for your eternal security is the blood of our only begotten, of God's only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no greater value. There's no greater price. That's how much you're valuable. That's how much you're worth to him. And you have to learn how to see yourself that way. You have to identify with that rather than all this stuff you're tripping up against. Your social status, how much money you make, how much much retirement you got, where you're at in the lineup, all, all these things. It's just a comparison game. And he wants to help you establish the truth that will never, ever, ever change. It'll always point you to true north. So when these guys, they were identifying that old man, they were burying that old man. Now they're identifying with their true identity in Jesus. And that's what we're going to try to do to help them understand that. So, so how you see yourself is very, very important. A lot of us have, have, have uh, just bought, up, bought into the enemy. There's this, real tr- there's this truth I came up with years ago, and I called it three knots in the devil's tail. And real quick, just take a picture of that because this is what the enemy tries to do. He's trying to, he's trying to just fortify this truth that you're not enough, that you're not accepted, that you're not forgiven, that you're not enough. You're not enough in every, they're all lies. You're not pretty enough. You're not smart enough. You're not good looking enough. You're not resourced enough. You know, my wife would ask me, honey, it's a trick question. Do I look good without my makeup? I said, babe, that's a trick question. That it's just a weird question. But a lot of people's identity is based upon how they look or how other people see them. That's a very, very shallow way of how you see yourself, right? I mean, I don't go around asking her, babe, how do I look without my shirt? It just, it's just dumb. That dude was taking his shirt, I was like, dang, man, can't compare to that. So these are the things, but here's what God's word says. Peter, I'm just going to share this passage. First Peter, the second chapter. Coming to him, coming to Jesus as to a living stone. He's talking about Jesus. And he says, Jesus was being rejected. He was rejected by men, but he was chosen by God and precious. Rejection came to Jesus in all facets, in all forms. And he could have even, that's why, you know, when, when, when he was getting baptized, he heard a voice that says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Why did the father do that? So the people all around can see, no, he did that so that Jesus could hear that about himself. You're accepted in me, son. And that's really all that matters. So he was rejected by man, but he was chosen by God. Then he says, you also... Us also, he's talking to us, all those that got baptized. You also now, you're a living stone. You're a lively stone. You're not a dead stone. You're not a broken stone. 
You're not an unaccepted stone. You're not a devalued stone. You're a living stone. So let's get stoned. No, I'm just kidding. You're a living stone. And you're, it's horrible. I just digressed. Sorry. But all of us as stones, I crack myself up sometimes. All of us, we are being built up. A, a, a spiritual house, like a holy priesthood, because Jesus himself, he's the chief cornerstone. Because we're, we're here to offer up spiritual sacrifices accepted to God through Jesus Christ. Go on to the next verse, 9 and 10. You, us, the living stones, we're a chosen generation. We've been chosen by God. We're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, so that we could proclaim the places of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. You once were not a people of God, but now you are a people of God. You once didn't obtain mercy, but now you've obtained mercy. So here's the outline of my message. For every single one of us, you are completely accepted. You are extremely valuable. You are eternally loved, eternally loved. You're totally forgiven. And you are fully capable to do all that God has designed for you to do here on this earth. Remember that. These notes are in your uh, app. You can get a hold of it. And I got scripture for every single one of these. I need you to bury yourself in this truth. And when you look in the mirror, just write it. Get your wife's lipstick and just write it. Like, I am chosen by God. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm eternally loved. I'm extremely valuable. I'm totally able, uh, capable to do whatever God's called me to do. That's who you are. And the scripture says this. So I had this picture last night. I was like, man, I'm going to go outside because I had this picture in my head. I'm going to go build it real quick. And so Jesus, Jesus is the chief cornerstone. When you build something, you start off somewhere where it's going gonna, it's gonna to have a foundation. And everything else springs from that, that cornerstone. Well, Jesus is the chief cornerstone. And then we are lively stones. We come in all shapes and colors and sizes. You got little brown Mexican here. You got yellow. You got all these different colors. And we as lively stones, Jesus is the master builder. He says, I will build the church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. <clears throat> when God asked Nehemiah to come back and fortify the wall or rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, when that mission, when he came, because the walls around the mission is used to fortify a city, to make it strong, to protect it, to watch over it, to keep it from the enemy. When he, when he gave him the commission to come back and rebuild the wall, he didn't say go buy new bricks from Acme. He didn't say go, you know, get new bricks. They had burned down that wall. The, the Babylon had taken it over. So Nehemiah's mission was to go and rebuild that wall, to fortify the city again, to make it strong again. And so he was missioned to go and take those stones that were burned, take those stones that were broken, take those stones that had previously been scattered, just like every single one of us here. We've all been broken in some form. We've all been hurt. Religion has hurt us. Old churches have hurt us. Our words from our dads have hurt us. Just things have happened in life, and we've been wounded. But God said, I'm going to reuse you. I'm going to restore you. And I don't know where you're at. You might be all jacked up inside. You might look like this. But he says, I want you to get this, restore it, and let it become a part of the wall. Let it become a part of the city. Your name is right here. Every single person who identified with their baptism here, their name is right here. This is one of their bricks. You are also one of these bricks. Levi, man, out of it. Levi's on here. Wow, that's a big wow. Sorry, Levi. And he comes and falls down, but we're going to get him back up. Because that's just who he is. And we will always rise back up because God's mission on this earth is if you do fall down, man, he's going to restore you back again. If you mess up, he's going to come back and he's going to put you on there. Why? So that we can, as a group, as a together, we can go out there and do some damage to the kingdom of darkness. Amen. And man, we've got to do it together because this little Mexican pastor can't do it by himself. I need your help. Look what just happened. I mean, it's just this is the craziest thing. I don't know who they are. Maybe you invited them. Thank God you invited them. All of a sudden, they're giving them. God did a work, and it's so beautiful. 
and all, well, he's just gonna continue to do this. If you keep identifying yourself with who God's called you to be and walk in that, man, there's no more, there's just, we won't have a building big enough, amen? Let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, you know who these folks are. And I'm so grateful, so grateful, Master, that you touched them, that you uh, heard their cry, and that you persuaded them to go and bury it in the water. Lord, as they come out, as they go out throughout their week, they might go back to the same house that they've been broken in, the same job, the same place, whatever it is. But Father, shield them. Shield them, protect them, watch over them. Help them to hear the voice of your Holy Spirit rather than the voice of the enemy. And we'll pray for them. We'll build them up. We'll strengthen them. We'll encourage them. We'll lift them back up, Lord God. And they will glorify your name here on this earth. So we just trust you. We thank you for all this in Jesus' name. And everyone that agreed with that said amen. Hey, you guys, we love you. We'll be here next week. Pastor Joel is back. I think he begins a series entitled, I'm Tired, or something like that. I can't remember. It's going to be awesome. God bless you. Love on somebody. We'll see you next Sunday. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.